We are back with another episode of Gatehouse Insights. Today, I'm joined by Sanad, who will shed some light on starting your own legal practice, the challenges that come with growing a business, how he leads a team across four office locations, and his view on business development. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the Gatehouse Legal Recruitment YouTube channel where you can catch it all. So I wanted to begin with how you commenced your own practice and what made you take that step in, in establishing your own firm. Yeah, um, a few years ago now, uh, I was working, so I started working in the city, then I worked in the suburbs and I was working for a guy out in St Albans and um, I didn't have, an, I didn't have a, a want to start my own practice, but I was doing everything at this at the practice I was working for. Um, and he didn't, make, he didn't make a simple answer, he didn't make me a partner. Um, and, you know, it was really difficult negotiating wages and stuff and I thought, well, if I'm already doing this for you, I might as well try on my own and, and uh, yeah, just uh, my mum is, is, had a little conveyancing practice in Deer Park, um, just up these little stairs, so I just set up a little desk and then, yeah, from there just, we went, we went on from there. And so it, it's been almost nine years? Yep. Can you share some of the challenges of, I suppose, building a practice um, and how you've overcome those? Yeah, um, nothing is planned. So the plan is not to have a plan. Um, but the one thing that I say to all the, all the young lawyers that I meet is um, you have to do good quality of work. It starts with that. So now I, I pride myself on that. So I started doing everything for clients. Um, so you, are, you become a yes person just because you take anything on and you do it yourself. And then if the, if the work is good, people will you know, say, come, come see this guy, He's, there's this young guy in Deer Park, you know, he'll be able to do it, he does great work, he's a good guy, and plus on top of that his work is amazing and you'll be, you know, um, and he'll look after you in terms of the fees. So he started from there. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, you employ one staff member and then the second staff member and then the other staff member leaves and all that. So there's a, there's a, there's a list of things what we could have done differently and probably should have done and there's a list of things that we did right, you know. And, and uh, now it's, it's, a, um, you know, it's a big business and there's a few more lawyers and staff members. How many are you? How, how big is the team? Uh, we've got nine lawyers and we've got another maybe dozen support staff. Yeah. So it's just under 20, yeah. maybe on 20. Which is yeah. quite large. And you're spread across four offices in different locations. That's right. How do you go about managing all that? Um, well, it's all our staff members, the, the, the major, uh, the senior associates. Um, so the Sunbury office, uh, we just acquired that pre-Christmas and I've got a partner in that office. So my, Imran Khan, who's, our, um, who's my partner in that office, him and I are partners in that. Um, he's a mate from uni, someone that I, and we, him and I worked together out of uni um, and then he went to Tassie and, and did his own thing and I, was, I started this stuff here in Melbourne and then we needed you know, the firm was growing, uh, there was so much staff and I needed someone I can trust so, and he wanted to come back into Melbourne so he, you know, him and I had a really nice open, open discussion and then he came back uh, three and a half years ago, so in July it'll be four years and then, you know, it's like any relationship, you know, the relationship has to work and he has to have the same values as myself. Um, so he then started managing the staff and started with good quality work. Uh, keeping up with the clientele and then we acquired Sunbury so I went into that together and then him and I just split him and I just split the duty so I'll do um, you know certain areas of law he'll do the others and then he'll manage staff and I'll see clients we just we just make it work because mm -hmm. yeah. you're also in that you're I suppose juggling family as well so yeah. you've got two young children how do you how do you manage it do you have strict <laughs> guidelines my wife has <laughs> a strict routine okay. starts with routine so we need you need you need you know routine and and you need calendar, calendar calendars calendars. That's what, that's what it is. And just kind of look at, at the end of the day, you just have to make the sacrifice to everything. You got to sacrifice your time to drop the kids off. You got to sacrifice your time not to see that client to do that. And the same with your kids. You just got to. It's, it's a balancing act. 
mate, I don't get it right. I mean, no one does, but we try to get it. We try to aim to get it right 90% of the time. Yeah, because you yeah. drop your children off at school. I do, yeah. So we just actually changed our routine. So last year I was doing a lot of that drop off. This year is is because uh, we've got our second one is now going to different to, uh, to kinder. So we, we split in time. So I'm doing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and my wife does Monday, Tuesday, uh, and then all the days she does a pickup. So yeah. yeah, it's good. Routines, mate. Routines, routines. They, work. routines they work. So some people are really <coughs> attracted to starting their own business or legal firm. They they think it's the the way forward. Mm -hmm. um, do you think business is for everyone? And what's some really <coughs> realities that they should know? Oh, definitely not. I don't think business is for everyone. I think this is a um, uh, you have to fit, you have to be a certain person to do this. Um, and look, anyone can go out and start a firm. It's it's the longevity. Uh, when I first started, um, you have this perception of who suburban lawyers are. Um, a lot of the firms are, you know, their first name, you know. Um, and I didn't want that mould. I wanted to create a commercial practice out in the West that people from the area could go to as opposed to having to drive into the city and get parking fines and, and all sorts of different things and, and miss a whole day just to see a lawyer for an hour. So that was, the, that was kind of like the mindset. Um, and then, you know, you just, you know, you get different clientele. You know, we've got lawyers at our, um, we've got lawyers at our firm that, have been with us for a very long time. The Deer Park office, um, uh, there's you know there's a lawyer there that is going to become a partner of that office um, very very soon. Uh, we've got two junior lawyers going into senior associates um, out in the Caroline Springs office that are you know both are amazing and, and they'll become partners as well. So um, and if I had that opportunity when I was at their position, um, I would have taken the partnership um, any day of the week. Mm -hmm. because the challenges of starting your own firm are very, very tough. Um, like I was saying before, you're a yes person to everything. You, you, know, you have to worry about everything. You have to worry about there's so much compliance work. Um, and on top of that, you've got to actually do the work. Mm. As opposed to, you know, if you, get to the, if you get to the opportunity of becoming a partner of the firm, all of that infrastructure is already there. You would have your support staff. You would have all you have to do worry about is um, maintaining the clients that you've already developed and providing good work. Mm -hmm. So those are the two big, big differences. Now you've been obviously, again, practised nine years. Have you felt <laughs> it's gotten easier at any point? Um, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. Look, look it's, 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 it's nice. It's the work that we do and the way the firm is at is, is a beautiful, it's, it's great. Don't get me wrong, um, but there's different challenges now. Like for example, when we first start, when I first started, I would get excited by simple files, you know, files that are you know run of the mill files. Someone's selling a you know a business, or they're doing a you know a couple is doing a will, or there is some just some some small time files. Now, because we have so much, so many lawyers, so many overheads, so much everything. Like you, you now, and we're doing different quality of work. Um, you now need the big stuff, you know. Just you need the, you get excited by only the big files, like your big, you know, big litigation disputes, like million dollar litigation disputes. You get excited by you know big estate disputes. So all of the other stuff, the smaller stuff, I don't see anymore because the other junior lawyers will see that. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 the difference. Yeah. You know? And with close to 20 employees, almost close to 20 employees, how do you manage everyone? Uh, well, Imran does a lot of that. Imran, Imran does um, a lot of that. Uh, you need good people, you know, and, and most of our people are really good. I mean, you know, and yeah, we, you, you need, you know, good people. Starts, with, you know, the people have to be good, and then you know we've got good systems. Um, everyone's accountable. Um, you know, open discussions. You know, there is there is none of that. Um, you know, ego about, you know, there's, everything is an open door policy, you can call any time, ask a question, all of that stuff. You know, just a real good working environment um, and if we create a good working environment that people want to work at, then everything becomes easy. Yeah. 
Do they <coughs> collaborate amongst the four officers? Do they have a? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah, we've got everyone's got great because they, you know, the senior lawyers kind of interchange. So they they'll go into Sunshine or they'll go into Caroline Springs or Deer Park. So everyone everyone gets along really really well. Yeah. yeah. That's good, and it's good that you interchange them, so no one's really stuck in one spot. No, no, no. No, yeah. it's, it's it like, and, and the lawyers, like I said, um, everyone kind of has their own areas of law, so so um, they don't kind of cross. There's, there isn't that we're going to fight for something. And, and, you know, the people that are on the path of becoming partners in the firm have their own areas of law set. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's awesome. Can you share your views, I suppose, on business development? Um, yeah, a lot of lawyers, again, think that, you know, I don't need to do that side of things, it's not <coughs> important. But what are your views on BD and do you find you're putting in more effort now with business development than you did at the beginning? Definitely more now. Um, very important. I have, this, I have this pitch that I do to clients and the pitch is you can be a great salesman. I could, you know, I'm, I like to think I'm a good salesman. I used to work in sales when I was working in uni. Uh, but you're only as good as the product. So you're only good as the work that you produce. So I can go and sell you that we can do amazing work. Um, but if I don't deliver, I'm going to make a fool of myself. And that person is going to lose that person's trust. So before any de business development you want to do and, and poach and entertain people and you know, look after that referral, you've got to make sure that you've got competent staff or you know, that you can produce what you're pitching. Because there's no point being you being a great salesman if you can't deliver. Mm -hmm. And you're only as good as your last delivery, if you want to call it, or last thing that you've done for the client. Because, you know, everyone's in an, you know, we're a dime a dozen and, you know, it's, yeah, Senad might be a great guy and him and I have a, you know, we both love Carlton and, you know, he's, he's great, we have a laugh, but, you know, that last deal wasn't good. So you hope that the relationships you've built that, you know, you can, you can kind of sustain if that does happen, but otherwise you can't be, you know, I, I don't ever get upset if someone wants to leave. Because I, I treat, you know, clients the way, you know, if I employ a professional to do a service for me. Yeah. I don't want to call up twice. I don't want to, you know, have a follow up, why is nothing happening? You know, that just leaves a bad, you know, it makes me anxious and upset and, other, and I can imagine then what the clients would be feeling like. And we, and we start with all our lawyers, you know, so we have this policy of, you know, don't, don't, don't be reactive, be proactive. Do you get all your, of your lawyers getting out there and you know, selling themselves services BD? Uh, no, we don't. So only Ryan and I do that, but because um, the lawyers have developed their own circles of uh, friends and, and connections, they, they bring in work. But it's at this stage, it's not a requirement for any of them to bring in any work. It's a bonus, of course it is. Yeah. Um, but they're at that level now of, well, that's, that's the difference between being a senior associate and being a partner. Because yeah. once you take that step, is the expectations are a lot different. Expectations are is that you're going to be self-sufficient, mm. and you're going to bring in a certain amount of work for the firm to justify. And that's it. Another episode of Gatehouse Insights draws to an end. Thank you for watching, and thank you for sharing this video with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the Gatehouse Legal Recruitment YouTube channel where you can see more. Mm.